If you guys thought you've ever seen a long, long rally, boy, oh boy, I got a surprise for you. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to the Gecko. Another day in the video for you guys. And today is part two of the XKC versus High War. I mentioned to you guys, we had an absolutely crazy, crazy rally. And this is not it. This is the preparation for the second rally that August led which was also an unbelievable rally, but we're gonna leave the best stuff for last. Let's talk about what we're seeing right now. A ton of field fighting going on. It seems like the right side of the fort is very clear of XAC members, which is how high have so many members so close ready to keep reinforcing. It was kind of like a pushback of high and then XKC came in back once the rally started marching. Everything you're seeing here is about three times faster than it should be, than it really is, primarily so you guys can see all the action going on. You can see that some of our guys were already handling, the attempting to handle the rally, and then when it hit, XKC started moving around, making sure everyone trying to hit the rally on top of the fort that's hitting it were getting shut down. But what XKC was doing wrong, as far as I'm seeing, is as you can see, the whole right side of the fort is clear of XKC troops, which is why you can see so many troops, or well, I might be blocking some of them, walking in and out from the right side, bottom right towards the fort and reinforcing it consistently. XKC were doing a, an unbelievable job on the left side, where they also had a lot of troops just standing by to join the rally. Now, here's the thing about rallying a fort. A fort is very easy to hold if you can come in and out of it as you wish and you can send multiple marches in it as well. So everything is very, very easy. Except for the fact that obviously you have to have all the people online and there's a lot of losses and a lot of pain. But the rough part is to lead a rally because a rally can only be joined by a member once and he cannot leave it. So he cannot refresh his troops. So all these troops that are coming in again and again into this rally, which is being reinforced, and at even this point, August was ahead health-wise, is unique players who have yet to join the rally, which is really, really insane and awesome and crazy well done by XKC having so many members. But as you can see on the top right, we had a lot of troops on standby just chilling, some of them being tier fives, ready to join into the fort whenever needed, which is what happened and how we ended up holding this rally. Now, this rally wasn't just a simple rally. It was a 3.7 million versus 6 million troops fight. It was the two alliances giving everything they got into this one fort. Now, how did we have the 6 million against their 3.7? Obviously, we can refresh troops against what they cannot do. So. If you have your one march in there, you're pretty much done -zo, which is why we have so many people. The thing is, though, you got to be as close as Turin to be able to refresh your troops consistently. So it was one of those things where for 3.7 million troops, where those troops had less tier fives than our tier fives in the fort, August did an unbelievable job. And I'm very surprised he got as close as he did to actually winning this. It's a shame he didn't, but it didn't slow down XKC at all. That rally was a, is still going on, but by the time it'll be done, it is 10 minutes of joining the rallies, joining the fort, getting out of the fort, coming into the fort, just insane coordination by absolutely everyone to get the job done. Now, what else can be said, right? What else can be said? It was straight up the coordination, tenacity, and willpower of two alliances to get this fort either there or out of there. And unfortunately for XKC, it was just not enough at this instance. Now you'd think to yourself, wow, a 10 minute rally, that's insane. And you guys are about to see the report coming up next. But the next rally, the third rally and final rally of that night before the fort was finally built was unbelievable. Look at how many people are in part of that rally. Look at how many people. That's a lot more than 20 or even 30 people. That's an insane amount of people. Look at all these guys joining in the fight. Look at how it got to a point where the hierarchy thing started blocking off people's names. That's how rough it was. Like the tree that they built on like the timeline of people joining. Look at the how many people. Look at how many troops. These are our boys. 
with their tier fours, tier fives, and a little bit of tier threes in there as well. But there were a lot of tier fives on the battlefield. And you're, you're gonna see their troops in a little bit, their losses, our losses, every person who was part of it and how much they sacrificed, which is unbelievable. There are people here who lost a lot of troops trying to hold. It's a six point, I mean, 3.7 went into a hospital, 519 dead, or well, five five point, say that again. There are 3.6 total fighting there, even more than that. That's what was remaining at the end. 500,000 went dead versus our, their 600,000 versus our 500,000. It, it was just, it's like insane amount of slightly wounded on their side, none remaining. On our side were like a million three, while there were like six slightly, it was just a crazy amount of numbers. It was an unbelievable amount of troops. I don't even need to tell you guys, you guys can see it on the screen. With tier fives involved, tier fours involved, it was crazy. If you ask me what they did wrong was obviously not clearing out that right side and leaving a path for more troops to keep joining the, the rally, the, the fort. And unfortunately for them, it's a game of numbers and our numbers were just bigger just because of the fact that we had a faster avenue into the fort as well as the fact that we can refresh our troops, which they can't. That's a pretty interesting mechanic that we're going to have to see how it ends up working out because in theory, a set of tier even ones can hold a fort against tier fives so long as you're consistently refreshing a crazy amount of troops in, right? So maybe that's something that's a little bit broken and we might, the Rise of Civilizations are gonna have to figure out how to perhaps diminish that, uh, that little bit of a change that happens and uh, would make a look at a little change where maybe you cannot refresh troops in a fort once there's a battle going on, only when there isn't and stuff like that. So it can be really interesting to see how this evolves. The third rally that you guys are about to see though, that was by far the craziest thing I've seen. Now at this point, Mr. Poop Command, uh, Poop Captain or Captain Poop or whatever he called himself at that time, or better yet known as Tommy, one of the SOCs R4, decided to take a matter into his own hands and rally the damn fort. Once again, the fort is at 90%. We're almost done building it. This is the last try. Look at all this field combat. Look at how many marches. Look at this. And the cool thing, by the way, is the game is, as you can see, like I'm, I picked up the phone right there. As I mentioned to you guys, I wasn't in front of the phone playing the game because I was with my family. So you can actually see that in between the takes, I sent some, uh, some gatherers to go gather. And the swipe up you guys saw right there was me picking up the phone off the table to see that I'm still in frame. And once I did, I picked, left it back there. And you can see the footage is not moving at all. It's because the phone was recording the whole time. Look at all these fights. I was not even aware this happened. I stopped the recording about half an hour, maybe 20 minutes after the fighting ended. And once I exported everything to my computer and started editing, then I saw how crazy things really got. Now this rally is not being sped at three times the speed. It's actually at 3.5, which makes a lot of difference because this rally was not a 10 minute rally, which is already impressive enough. It was a 17 excruciating, excruciating, painful, long minutes where for a few moments, Tommy was actually super close to getting it done. Tommy was leading a couple of times throughout the fight. He actually, and XKC and all the, and SOC guys, everyone who participated, big shout out to you guys because people kept joining his rally, reinforcing his rally, and that's unique players. You're gonna see the, the little smush of, uh, of them leaving once they were defeated because yes, we did held at the end. And you'll see how many people, and it's just unreal. It is unbelievable the amount of movement on the map, troop speed and all that without any lag or simplified graphics, may I say. All the pleasure of viewing for you guys. As you can see, you might be able to see, I don't know yet where I placed the, the camera exactly, but you might see a move please marker. And the reason that marker was placed there is that our tier five members wanted to port closer to the fort. And one of the really cool things that we figured out halfway through it is that because there's so many troops everywhere, we can't really port people close, which was very sad. And I am probably blocking this, but one of the smartest things XKC did is they noticed an empty area where someone had ported out in order to let a big boy port in. 
and they just sent a march there and stood in place. So just like I explained in the previous video, when it comes to placing forts or porting or anything like that, you need to have a clear area. Even a standing march can stop a porter. So if you guys want one tip for your wars in the future, make sure you guys have a little bit of troops spread around so there's no places for your enemies to port closer, especially their big boys. A few of our big boys were now nowhere near the fort. At this point, you had Lee at the top right there who had ported in uh, and actually because Shin wasn't able to port in, as you can see, they made it says make room for Shin and eventually Lee got in there. These are people who spent a lot, a lot to get in there. You can see Turin got out of the way because he just spent all almost all his troops in terms of infirmary wise to be able to hold the fort as long as we did. And now Shin is in his place and Shin's a tier five player, man. He's just sending tier fives, not even caring. Look at how low the fort got. The fort got so low compared to their rally that it was actually scary. For a moment, there was panic in the chat. For a moment, there was panic in the chat. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. We were a 90 some percent of the building. Come on, hold. As you guys know, because I spoiled it, we did end up holding at the end and the fort stayed in place. But now I wanna to talk to you guys about what happened after as you guys enjoy the rest of this footage because I'm not planning on making a part three yet. I do have a little bit of footage of what happened, but it was insanely boring. So I'm not gonna bother you with it. I will tell you what ended up happening. Apparently we got rid of that fort eventually. Once it got placed and uh, people calmed down a little bit and uh, the air was cleared, I think that we were the ones who actually gave up on that fort and I was like, okay, cool, we're gonna leave you be. Some drama happened, you know, all the good stuff. I don't wanna get you and look at that. Look at how many people, look at that. Look at how many people participated in that rally. But anyway, bottom line is we gave up that fort. They ended up doing something. I don't really know what happened. We decided to attack, they decided to, I don't care. We ended up placing the port, you know, another fort much, much closer to their pass. And uh, as you guys enjoy this awesome, insane 17 minute rally report, uh, we ended up taking their pass that I showed you in the previous video, which connected all their flags in there in the zone three, took out their pass. And with that being said, they were no longer in zone three. For better, for worse, I am not judging. I don't wanna know the details. I don't wanna know the background. All I gotta say is 900,000 dead troops on their side, which is rough against a ton of dead troops on our side as well. It was a 4 million plus people rally. It was unbelievable. It was a crazy war. I'm gonna guys leave you guys with that commentary just so you guys can enjoy a little bit of the report, a little bit of the good stuff. If you guys like these kinds of videos, slap a like on the video, smash the like button so I know you guys actually want to see this more and I'll get more involved in fights. Hopefully the next war, I'll be part of the fighting as well, not only recording. Trust me when I tell you it's not the finest thing on earth to be in an alliance where people fight and you are not able to. So yeah, that's one of those things. Look, 750,000 or 720,000 dead on our end. A lot of tier fives. I actually see Poop Captain actually has tier fives as well. He sent a little bit of tier fives with his tier fours. So that's awesome. Congratulations, Tommy. It seems like there's a little bit of a competition going on now. And hopefully with things as they are, SOC will get back up and XKC will fight together and there will be a nice rivalry and we will be fighting for a long, long time to come. For now, I'm the Gecko, I'm out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you guys liked the video again, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button, but let me know in the comments why. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feedback, all of like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff is in the description or leave me in the comments. I wanna ask you guys, what was the craziest rally you either participated on or were part of? If you have a report for it, send it to me on Discord. I'll definitely feature it in a future video if it's as juicy as you guys say it is. Until the next time, have a great rest of your week. It's almost there, the weekend time. One last thing, tomorrow's video is gonna be a special video and we're starting a new series, gem spending series, which we kind of started already, uh, but now we're gonna make it a little bit nicer. And uh, the next video is all about the Wheel of Fortune event, which is just ending today in most, in, in my kingdom, two kingdoms that I play in. One thing I'll tell you right now, if you haven't played it yet, do your Wheel of Fortune if you have the gems to spend. I'll explain in more detail tomorrow why actually that event is much more lucrative than it seems. And it's not as a gambling as you think it is. 
So if you want to make sure you don't miss that video, hit the subscribe button. Turn on the bell to get on a page every time I upload a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a great rest of the week. Great weekend, as I already said. And until the next time, peace.